So for museums, that started with two main museums, which was the Huntington Library and the Minnesota History Center. So the Huntington Library, the first time I went there was in seventh grade. It was for a field trip. It was a horrible day. You know, I was getting picked on and I was kind of alone. I sat on a bench and I looked around. I just felt some peace. Everything was just overwhelmingly beautiful. In that moment, I was like, oh, it doesn't matter what happened, like this place is mine. So I kept going there every year till I graduated college. And then the other one was the Minnesota History Center. I would come here like every year and either you or Aunt Marine would take me to the History Center and let me go around and see everything, read everything, press every button that they have. <laughs> And I just loved how it was always like very dynamic and hands-on. It was complete opposite of like the Huntington Library. I really connected with both of them. So that really fostered my love for history. I first I applied as a history major to UC Santa Barbara, got rejected. So I went to Cal Poly. During my first two years, it was more like GE requirements. I decided that I didn't want to be a history teacher but I didn't actually know what I wanted to do. And that's when I took History 100, Professor Wallace, and talked about how she was a public historian and how she worked in museums. I was like, oh, that's an option. That just clicked. This is what I want to do. And I applied at the Minnesota History Center. I bombed it, did terrible, um, and didn't get the internship. But the lady that interviewed me said if I'm that interested in public history, I should consider the public history program. And then she also said I should apply the next year. So I applied the next year for an internship, still got rejected, but um, I already had the public history and heritage studies program. If I look at it, it's like a lot of stuff had to go wrong for me to end up in the place that I wanted to be. Just in my first semester, I have learned a lot about myself, about being more aware of my perspective when I look at history and when I look at social justice issues. There's a reason for people's ideas and prejudices. I need to be that bridge. That's on me. I feel like I've been very privileged in the family that I have. It wasn't just a coincidence that I love history. It, you know, like Auntie Shawi bringing me here every summer and being able to visit that history center, it wouldn't even have been possible without her. It was an effort by many people that love me. That was part of why I felt like these places were mine. It was places where I felt peace and, and that I felt loved. Not everyone has that experience, so I hope that I can help other people have that experience. But also, I feel like I'm privileged in that I have empathy and compassion for other groups of people because I have insight on areas of social justice issues just from personal experience and that also came from my family. It's, it's easier to meet them where they're at because sometimes I've been where they're at and my mind isn't changed until it's a personal experience. Public history, not so much in the past but moving forward it's this effort to try and bring healing to communities that didn't always have a voice in history and in museums shed light on multiple pasts and multiple truths well, i hope that i can create empathy for different people um, through personal stories and through testimonies and you know that's where empathy and connections come from and you should remember that the background you come from where you were raised how you were raised has a lot to do with it thanks grandma i mean it so okay 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 thank you